what's up and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving a review for the film Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Now I decided to give a review for this film because they have re-released it in 3D. So that's why I decided to get this from a review. Now at one point this used to be my all time favorite film. Like this was back when it was first released in 1991. Because I remember seeing this film in the theaters and I saw it two times you know. And I could remember my anticipation for this film too as well. So that's why I just decided to know to get us like a review you know. Being that it's back in theaters now in 3D. Now I must say this is a, a masterpiece of a science fiction film. And this is also the film that made me the science fiction fan that I am today. Like without this film I probably wouldn't have gotten into like Star Wars you know. And other films of that genre you know. I probably wouldn't, have, wouldn't even have gotten into that kind of those kind of films or anything like that you know. It was Terminator 2 Judgment Day that made me the science fiction, I guess you could say geek <laughs> or fan that I am to this day, you know, it's my favorite genre, you know. Well, anyway, of course, everyone, well, most people who have seen this film, they know this film is about two uh, machines from the future, the year 2029, who have been sunk back in time, you know, and one of them is programmed to actually destroy the, the future resistance leader known as John Connor, and he is, he is still a boy at this point. But then one of them is actually programmed to protect him too as well, you know. And of course we know, if you've seen the first film, you'll know that in the first film it was only one machine that was sunk back in time. And in that film, this machine was sunk back to kill that his mother, the future resistance leader's mother. He was actually sunk, to, the machine was actually sunk to kill her, you know. And at, at that point, you know, it, it was played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was the villain of the film at that time. But of course, in this sequel, Terminator 2, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger returning in the role of the, uh, the Terminator T-800. But this time, he's actually uh, the protector of the boy, John, John Connor. He's actually the protector versus him coming to kill him. But then you have this other, like, uh, Terminator known as the T-1000, which is a shape-shifting, I guess you could say, machine, liquid metal-like, you know, machine, you know. Now that's the villain that is played by Robert Patrick. Now of course that one is more advanced than the T-800s, you know. So that one is somebody to actually kill John Connor. And of course, you have uh, the Terminator played by uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The T-800 is actually programmed now to protect John Connor. And John Connor is actually the one who sent the Terminator back in time to protect him, you know. So he, he wouldn't be killed. So they can have a future resistance leader, you know, like in the future. Now at times, this franchise, if you watch all the Terminator films, it can kind of get disjointed, like the time travel stuff they have going on can kind of get like disjointed, you know. But still, it still is cool, you know. Now this film was directed by James Cameron, you know, who of course went on to direct like Titanic and like Avatar, you know, like other blockbuster films, you know. And it stars on Schwarzenegger, like I mentioned before, as the uh, T-800 Terminator. You have uh, Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor, you know, back from the original Terminator. You have uh, Robert Patrick as the T-1000. You have uh, Edward Furlong as uh, John Connor. You have uh, Joe Martin as a uh, Miles Dyson, and he's the one who actually created like the uh, the Skynet, like the thing, like the brain, what the program behind it, basically the chip and so on. You know, he's actually the one behind that, that the, the creation of Skynet, which is and you know Skynet was actually at the computer which gained intelligence on its own and it decided to turn against mankind, and that's when it created like Terminators and all that kind of stuff, and like you know basically tried to wipe out the whole human race but this happened way in the future and it actually was behind like the nuclear holocaust ho holocaust which is in the Terminator film itself you know now you have other people too like that, that are back in this one from like, the original one you know yeah you have uh, Earl Bourne he returns as uh, Dr. Peter Superman who was also in the first one too as well you know and in this film he is Sarah Connor's psychiatrist you know and of course he still doesn't believe her that there's like machines from the future trying to kill her and her son and so on you know like that which is kind of like, the, the, I guess you could say his, his parts with uh, Linda Hamilton and Sarah Connor, they are really like the parts that kind of like, you know, stand out far as like, like the acting go, you know, because of course there's no question it was Linda Hamilton who really stood out as Sarah Connor for his performances going in this film, you know. Now everybody I thought did a pretty good job, you know, but it's really her that really stood out. Even I think Joe Morton as uh, Miles Dyson, I really believe he stood out too, like his performance too as well. I believe he has stood out too as well, being that he was the creator of Skynet too as well. Now this film overall, 
like the action of it, it has some of the best action scenes ever filmed in a film. And that's what really makes, makes it so remarkable too as well, is that it's a, it's a very well filmed like action film, but it's still really science fiction, you know, because you're dealing with like, like robot cyborgs from the future, you know, and plus like the opening of the film is always cool and awesome to me as well. It's like in the future, it's not that long, but you can see like the battle between like the resistance fighters and like the other uh, termination, like the endoskeletons and stuff, and they have like laser rifles and blasters and stuff. It's like flying, like like airships and stuff. This is awesome, you know. <laughs> I always thought that was cool, you know. But overall, like I could say, like uh, even the visual effects in this film too, as well. They had like like at the time it was definitely like it was a uh, trend setting at the time. The visual effects they had like of the T1000 itself, being that he could like morph and like shape shift into any kind of different thing, you know. That at the time was also like very like amazing, you know, like the visual effects. And they still hold up very well to this day. Like you can watch this now and the visual effects for like the T-1000 whenever he's like shape-shifting, like morphing, you know, and stuff like that. It still looks awesome and stuff, you know, as well, you know. And then like I said, just like the other action scenes, like the human, I thought Arnold Snake was like perfect as a Terminator. And it was cool and awesome that they was actually made, they was actually able to make him into like the good guy this time around. You know, he was a son to kill, you know. Like like a uh, Suricon like he did in the first one, he was actually sunk this time to protect, so it was kind of cool that they, they, they was actually able to turn his, his uh, character into like the uh, good guy, not like a hero versus him being a villain like he was in the first one, you know. And like Edward Furlong as uh, John Connor, I thought he was kind of good, and this was like his debut film too as well, you know, as far as like acting go. I thought he did a good job as John Connor. Now, you, like being a John Connor is the actual resistant, like like leader in the future, you would have thought that he would be like a more like rough looking, like you know, like street like character, you know. But he he was kind of like the way they did him was kind of like soft like, you know. That's what I always thought was kind of odd. But then you know, I, I, then then again, it makes sense because he has his, his mother here, like Sarah Connor, and she's like very rough on him and stuff, you know. So that's probably why he did get that way and become that way. Plus, he had this incident with like two Terminators, you know, around him. So you know, one protecting him and one trying to kill him constantly, you know. So that kind of probably was what molded him into being like the future Resistance leader that we would see eventually, you know. Now this film, uh, like I said, this is like an excellent film, you know. At times, I guess it does have moments where it, like drags, you know. I guess about like uh, not really like halfway through, but they kind of like uh, kind of like halfway like through the film, but not really. But and it's still entertaining and interesting, like the things that's going on and the things they're talking about. You know, everything is still like, interesting and good. You know, there's not constantly like action going on, but when it is action, it's like some of the best action scenes you ever seen. And of course, like the visuals, like I said as well. You know, but I really do believe it was like Linda Hamilton who really stood out in this film for his performances. Go like that, Sarah Connor. I think her performance really stood out. Plus, like the soundtrack for the film, how they brought back the original Terminator theme, but it kind of like mixed it up and changed it a little bit. I think that's so cool and awesome, you know. Now, this is a very violent film, too, as well. You have like blood and stuff, like people getting stabbed and everything. It's a lot of like cursing, and especially even from like John Connor, like the boy, he's like cussing a lot and stuff, you know, which is okay, you know. And it is like a lot of violence in the film, too, as well, you know. And these were kind of typical of Arnold Schwarzenegger films anyway, you know. But yeah, at one point this used to be my all-time favorite film, but eventually other films had actually surpassed it, you know, throughout the time. But it is a film that really turned me into like a science fiction like fan, you know, made me a fan of the genre, you know, and made science fiction like my favorite genre too as well. Now I went and saw this in 3D. Now that they have it in 3D, I wouldn't see I went and saw it, you know. Now I'm really I'm not really too big on like 3D, you know, it's it's stuff, you know. But it, it did look cool, and I plan on giving it another try, you know. But it, it did look cool, like it was moments where Austin Snake, like, where it's the Terminator, when he's just holding a shotgun. You can tell, like, he's like, just him aiming, it, like, it's actually out the screen, you know. <laughs> so I did thought that was kind of cool. Plus, even when it's, like, coming on with, like, the flames, you know, like, like when you see, like, the Holocaust happening, like, at the playground, you know, and so we saw, like, the fire and stuff as it's coming on with the credits. It does, like, the flames are coming out the screen and stuff, you know. And even some of the moments where, like, the T-1000 is morphing, it does, like, the liquid, like, when he's morphing and stuff, which is still so awesome and cool to this day, you know. It, it does, like, it's coming out the screen and stuff as well, you know. So the 3D visuals, I think, were pretty good in this film. So I did go see it, and I may go see it again, you know, in 3D. Now, there's also other versions of this film that added, like, uh, extended footage, which made it longer. I've seen all of those, you know. Like, like they actually like theatrical like cuts and like extended versions and so on. I've seen all of those. Like they have more scenes with the T one thousand where you can see them like malfunctioning and stuff like that. That they, they didn't have any original theatrical cut. There's plus there are more scenes with them like going through like the T eight hundred Terminator himself too. There's a bunch of scenes that were actually cut out, you know. 
I have seen all of those, though, but they didn't really make the film much more better or anything. They just gave like a little more stuff in that you could tell at the time that they, they, they didn't really need. You know, like James Cameron didn't have to put that in the film. Plus, like the uh, like the uh, the endoskeleton effects by uh, Stan Winston, like the term, like the visual, like the effects that he did. You know, I thought he did a good job on those. You know, Stan Winston, the late Stan Winston, because you know he passed away. You know, I thought he did a good job with those two as well. You know, but overall, Terminator Two: Judgment Day. And, and like I said, this is this used to be like my favorite film. I'll, I'll be giving this a, a A. I kind of want to give it an A minus, but I'm going to say give it an A. You know? <laughs> I really did enjoy this film at the time, you know. Like I said, boy, if it weren't for this film, I wouldn't be like the science fiction fan that I am today. You know, it really was this film that did that, you know. And I was already like a fan of like Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. I was already a fan of the original Terminator, you know. But I was already like a fan of so, like his movies like Predator and like Total Recall and stuff like that. You know, I was already a fan of those kind of films, you know. So I kind of believe that's what kind of pushed it there too as well, you know. But yeah, in the end, um, Terminator 2 and Judgment Day, I'm giving this an A. And this is my review for Terminator 2 and Judgment Day. And I would highly recommend this for, for people who have never seen it. Or if you have, if you saw the first one, you know, if you're an Arnold Nickel fan. Or if you like science fiction fans, you know, I would definitely recommend this film, you know. So that's my review for Terminator 2 and Judgment Day. Please leave a comment and subscribe too as well.